There's a huge difference between a good or even great software developer and a top 1% software engineer. And for many, reaching this top 1% level might not even be something you want. But if it is, what I want to do in this video is share with you some of the key traits and habits that I've noticed in the most productive software engineers that I've ever worked with based on my time at Lyft, Meta, and most recently, Algo Expert. And more specifically, what I'm going to do in this video is break down 10 key things that I've noticed these developers did better than anybody else I ever worked with. The first thing that every single one of these developers did is they dove deep into something and they became the subject matter expert in that thing. So to sort of demonstrate the point, an extreme example, imagine two different software engineers. The first one simply is a jack of all trades. Maybe one day they do some iOS development, the next they're working on some infrastructure, and the next they're writing React components. They can do a little bit of everything, but they're not a specialist in anything. On the other hand, consider one specific engineer who all they do is they work on one specific thing. It doesn't matter what that thing is, but let's say for example, all they work on is JavaScript performance improvements. Well, the first engineer will be useful in a lot of different ways, but they're not going to be the expert in anything. The second engineer is the expert in that one thing. So when that one thing is needed, whether it be on their team, the org, or even at the entire company level, they're the person that people go to ask. So this means that they are able to have impact that nobody else can have versus this jack of all trades engineer is extremely replaceable and they have impact that lots of other people could have. An iOS specialist could do the iOS development they do. A backend specialist could do the backend work they do. That doesn't mean that that engineer is not valuable. It's valuable to have lots of skills. And I think that realistically you should be somewhere in the middle. But the point is that the more you become an expert in one specific thing, the more that that one specific thing can allow you to have unique impact that nobody else is having. And that allows you to become sort of that 1% of software engineers. And with being a subject matter expert, I also noticed that all of these people were extremely humble in the sense that whenever something came up that was outside of their area of expertise, they would recognize, okay, this is not the thing that I'm best at. And they would admit that they would say, this is not something I know how to do. And they would go reach out to whoever the subject matter expert is on that thing and ask them for help. Essentially, they just recognize that software engineering is a team sport. All of these software engineers were also extremely good at recognizing what their current scope was, or what it was expected to be, and finding ways to have impact beyond that scope. So in software engineering, we usually have some leveling system within the company. So you can think of this as sort of junior software engineer, software engineer, senior software engineer, and then something like a staff software engineer, and then maybe a principal software engineer, maybe a director of software engineering after that. The levels can differ a little bit from company the company, but something like that. We oftentimes think about these levels in terms of years of experience, but that's not really what they represent. That might be correlated with them, but that's not what they mean. The levels are about scope. So a junior software engineer is somebody who sort of assigned tasks and they do those tasks. And then a senior software engineer, for instance, is somebody who might be seeking out tasks and they're having more of a team-wide impact. A staff software engineer, on the other hand, is not just having team-wide impact, but they might be having impact across their entire org. A principal software engineer might be having impact across the entire company. Maybe a director of software engineering is having impact not just at the company, but even at an industry level. So these are sort of different levels of impact that you can have as a software engineer. And these 1% software engineers are sort of looking to the next level and saying, okay, how can I have impact at that next level? So as a junior software engineer, try to think about ways that you can have impact to your entire team. As a senior software engineer, you can be thinking about how can I have impact to the entire org? And the same is true for the higher level levels of software engineering. But at the same time, these developers were extremely good at learning to say no. If a project came up that they just didn't have time to work on or that they flat out thought was a bad idea, they would say, no, I'm not going to work on that. Here's the reasons why. And they would sort of push back on it. And because of that, these were actually developers that I found that management respected their opinions the most because they were willing to actually voice their opinions. Another key trait I noticed about every single one of these people is they seem to all have mentors. So find a mentor and specifically try to find a mentor who's sort of in a place that you want to be in in say five or 10 years, because clearly they took a path from where you currently are to where you want to be. So they can have some insights on how to carve out that path for yourself. And you can ask them questions and sort of pick their brains about what mistakes they made, what things they think they did extremely well, and what things they think you're doing well, and what mistakes they think you are currently making. You often hear that everybody has a unique path. And to some extent, this is true. But at the same time, there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. If somebody had a path extremely similar to the path you want to take, well, that person probably has a lot of value to give you. And because of that, you should try to seek them out as a mentor. An interesting point about all of these software engineers is they sort of broke this stereotype of what a software engineer should be. Particularly, they had extremely strong soft skills 
even to the point that it seemed like they were actively training them, especially the skill of communication. And this makes sense because if you write some amazing code, well, nobody cares unless you can articulate why that code is so amazing and what impact it's going to have. And if you're trying to take some initiative to create some new project, that initiative doesn't matter if you can't articulate why that project is going to matter. If you can't articulate what the impact of it is going to be, then nobody's going to care about this project you're trying to propose. And particularly the best senior engineers I ever worked with were extremely good leaders as well. So they recognized ways that they can make the entire team more productive. They helped people stay on track. They helped people get unblocked. And they were just really good at helping everybody else be better at their jobs. In a way, they're sort of like the point guard of the software engineering team. And because of that, their impact is able to stretch far beyond any code that they actually wrote themselves. The best software engineers I worked with were also extremely good at debugging and sort of just problem solving skills in general. And this makes sense because if you think about all of the time you spend writing code, the majority of that is not spent actively typing code. I could type a full day's worth of code in like five minutes. The time is spent figuring out what to code and the time is spent debugging the code that you just wrote. And they were extremely good at this. They understand how to debug code. They understand all of the debugging tools they have available to them. They understand the resources available to them at the company. They understand who the correct people are to reach out for help when they don't know how to solve a problem. They understand how to sort of formulate those questions in a good way to get the correct answer as quickly as possible. Just overall, they were good at finding an issue, diagnosing what exactly the problem was, and figuring out how to solve it as quickly as possible, and really far quicker than anybody else I ever worked with. The best software engineers are also always learning. And there's some debate about this because some people say, okay, I have this full-time job. Why am I expected to continuously be learning outside of work? And that's valid. If you don't want to do that, I don't think you necessarily always have to. But if you want to be one of those 1% software engineers, well, they're all doing it. They're doing some hobby programming. Maybe they're reading Hacker News and all of these different blog posts. They're keeping up to date with the latest frameworks and technologies and updates to languages. They're sort of just always ahead of the curve as far as new industry standards are concerned. All of these developers are also extremely good at just cutting out all of the nonsense and focusing in on what actually matters. You won't see them building features that they haven't proved anybody will ever use. You won't see them scheduling meetings that could have just been Slack messages. You won't see them prematurely optimizing some code that just doesn't need to be optimized. And when something isn't going correctly, they are quick to pivot to something that will be going correctly. And just overall, they don't waste a lot of time throughout the day. And I bet if you look at your schedule, if you aren't one of these people, well, you probably have a lot of time that you are wasting throughout your day that you could be optimizing away and putting towards coding things that actually matter and building things that actually matter and just having real impact. All of these developers also had a deep understanding of their products. I say this all the time, but code is not a product. Code is a tool for building products. And these developers deeply understand what the products are they're building, what the pain points are they're solving for their users, who those users even are, so what the target demographic is, what the business model is behind the product, and all of these important things that sort of develop a business mindset for them and allow them to use that business mindset to make product-focused decisions instead of just making engineering-focused decisions, which oftentimes lead to changes that just don't have as much impact as when you think about the customers and the product first. None of these software engineers ever got complacent. They recognized that they should be constantly growing and that they should be constantly progressing in their careers. And whenever that wasn't the case, they would analyze why that wasn't the case and they would make a change so that they would start growing and progressing again. And these changes can be lots of things. They can be just changing projects on your team, changing teams within your company, or completely jumping to a new company. And that's something that they're not afraid to do. If the last year has taught us anything, it's that the second it doesn't make financial sense for a company to employ you, they will do a layoff. And you should have the exact same mindset towards them. The second that working at that company or on your team doesn't make sense for you, it isn't helping you progress, whatever it might be, you should consider leaving and moving on to something that is going to be helping you. And just overall, I think loyalty is an important trait that humans can have, but when it's related to mega corporations, it's sort of just silly. All of these developers were also extremely good at writing clean, idiomatic, testable, and maintainable code, meaning they didn't have to spend a bunch of time fixing old code, or worse, getting themselves out of tech debt, as we call it. And if you're looking to learn how to write code just like this, you should watch this video next.